Before we get into today's video, I want to welcome my newest subscriber, Francis Catherine, who was born on June 11th, to my friends and my amazing editor, uh, Caroline, and her husband, Greg. So welcome, Francis Catherine, to the world. I'm going to put a picture up of Francis right now. And uh, in the interim, helping me out is my friend, uh, Summer Melville, who Summer, as you may or may not know, is the editor for Justin uh, Kobelka over at Canova Reptiles. Summer also has a channel of her own, Girl with Scale, so be sure and check that out. So with all that said, let's just jump into today's video. Welcome to video number 37, guys. I missed you. I know I've been taking a break for a while, but um, as I mentioned earlier, Caroline, my editor, just had a little baby girl, so uh, we had a little bit of a delay on videos, but bottom line is we are back, and I am back with, I just acquired a new group of baby Amazon Basin Emeralds. This is one of them right here. There are four babies total. I'm gonna get into these today. I'm gonna show you all my babies. I'm gonna talk about how to care for them and how, how to care for them compared to say Northern Emeralds and Green Tree Pythons. I am gonna show you guys some cages today because after all of my videos, the, ca the questions I get the most are still about caging. How do you cage arboreals from keeping babies to adults? So I'm gonna give you two options for baby cages. I'm gonna give you an option for adult cages as well. I got jungle carpet python eggs hatching as I speak. I'm gonna show baby jungles hatching. I had a bunch of eggs laid um, just a bunch of breeding updates I want to show you guys I'm gonna get you caught up on my discus tank and I think we're gonna go quickly and get through everything so just stick with me and let's just jump into let's get into caging right now you know actually before we get into cages I just wanted to show you guys my discus tank If you've been watching my channel you know I try to get this discus tank going I've had some delays, primarily because there's a little bit of a learning curve I'm learning with the uh, with the sump filters. This is the first time I've ever run a sump. I'm used to running canisters. But overall, it's coming along really well. Um, I hope to have fish down here in the next three to four weeks. I decided I think I'm going to go with RO water. I don't know if you guys are uh, familiar with that with discus. It's best to use RO water. Right now, there's not uh, RO water in here. And a question, if anybody's using RO water for the reptiles, I'd be interested in hearing that because I may consider using it for my animals. But anyway, this is 125. This is built by glasscages.com. I love those guys and I'm getting there. It needs some decorations, obviously in the lights and stuff, but let's just jump right now into adult caging for snakes. I wanted to show you that because there's a lot of fish heads who watch my videos. It's amazing to me how many, um, actually how many people who keep snakes keep fish. So I thought you guys would want to get caught up on that. Um, let's talk about adult cages for arboreals first. Uh, you okay, honey? My wife almost fell. You got it? <laughs> yeah. uh, so arboreal cages first. This is a focus cubed habitat uh, cage. This is made by Steven and Ashley Howdy in Texas. Again, I'm always asking about adult cages. I don't use focus cube. I use boa file. I love boa file. Just going to get back to making them soon. However, the reason I use boa file is I've been using them forever. I like everything to match. But an absolute alternative, I would absolutely consider if I was looking for cages right now, focus cubed habitats. This particular cage is 34 inches wide, it is 24 inches deep, it is 18 inches high. It's perfect for adult chondros, um, it's perfect for emeralds as well. For an adult female emerald or an adult female basin, it might be a little tight, I'd consider going 36 inches in width, maybe even 48 inches actually, uh, maybe even a little higher than 18 inches, but again, for uh, young animals and adult chondros, is a perfect cage. I just, honestly, these cages are just made so well, and I'm gonna show you what Stephen and Ashley made me, is it says, Jesus hates carpondros, and it's actually, uh, it's a vent cover, and the reason they made that is because, you know, they get me. Carbon fiber perches, this cage is fully decked out, I cannot say enough for their customer service. Any and every option you guys want, you could tell Stephen and Ashley, they will make it for you, they will walk you through the process. This is a fully decked out cage. This one starts at I think 439, I don't know if it should be, and you can go crazy from that point as well. But again, fully decked out, great cage for adult arboreals, and I love them, and Focus Cute Habitats, and you should check out that website when you get a chance. And right now I'm gonna give you, just show you an option for, if you only have one baby arboreal, how can you start that? Let's show you that right now. I showed this in a previous video, but it's worth showing again, guys. This is from Specialty Enclosure Designs. If you have many baby arboreals you're raising up, it's super easy, you just get a rack for them. But what if you only have one baby arboreal? You just got your very first conjure, your first baby emerald. You only need one enclosure. Well, Specialty Enclosure Designs answered that question for you. And this is just a single tub system. This is a perch by Specialty Enclosure Designs. My friend David Brahms, he even made a hook. He thought of everything. This has all back heat. The only thing you need for this, this enclosure is a thermostat to hook up, but obviously for your heat. And that's it. It's for a single animal. This, this uh, sells for $150. That's everything included. I believe it's $35 to ship it. And again, if you have a single arboreal animal, it's even great for you. You can actually raise from a baby 
up until almost a year old animal, maybe even a little bit older than a year old in this enclosure. And again, $150 specialty enclosure designs, $35 for shipping. I love it. It's an amazing option. And I just want to show you guys what's available out there for uh, our broils because it's hard to find stuff. Okay, how much do you guys love baby basins? I love them as much, if not more than anybody. And don't ever think, because I've been doing this as long as I have guys, that I don't appreciate these animals and I'm not like wowed by them like you guys are. Trust me, when I get baby basins in, I am totally pumped and I'm even more excited to show you these animals and uh, tell you how I'm gonna set them up and how I plan to raise them and just give you a little background as far as how to keep basins in general compared to some other arboreals. So these are four baby basins. Two of them are from the same litter, two are from another litter. So theoretically there's four animals, two pair that are completely unrelated to the others. They are not sexed. When I buy young emeralds or young basins, even though some people maybe can accurately probe them when they're really small, I'm just not comfortable doing it. I don't have the I don't have the breeders do it. I'd rather just buy them as a group and then raise them up and I'll figure out the sexes in about six months from now. Because you know, when you're buying baby arboreals, they're not like buying baby carpets or baby wall pythons. I mean there's a there's a pretty good chance before they reach adulthood, in the case of basins at five to six years of age, that you may lose one, right? Or may even lose two. Who, who the heck knows? They're a little bit tricky. So I just buy them in groups. I plan to add four more baby basins in the near future to my group as well, raise up six to eight, you know, eight animals total over the next few years, and then I'll worry about probing them, and theoretically I'll have uh, hopefully a good ratio of males to females. So how do basins compare to chondros? Well. As far as difficulty level, I think chondros are far more difficult to take care of than basins, simply because chondros are prone to respiratory infections, they're prone to prolapse. You don't really get that with Amazon basin emeralds. How do basins compare to northern emeralds? I think they are far more easy to keep than northern emeralds. The reason being that northern emeralds are they tend to be prone to regurgitation. So do I think basins are easy to keep? They're not difficult to keep? I don't think they're easy to keep at all. I think they're a more difficult animal to keep. It's just that if you have arboreal experience, then they are easier, I think, than northerns or chondros. If you do not have ar arboreal experience, well, they're gonna, they're a little tricky. As you guys know from watching my videos, arboreals are just simply, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to intimidate anybody out there, but the reality is it is just more difficult to keep arboreal animals over terrestrial animals. It's just a fact of it. So how do I keep them as far as husbandry? Well, these enclosures, these are all cane boxes. They do not make these anymore, but you know who does? Stephen and Ashley Howdy at Focus Cube Habitats make a really nice cane box for yearling chondros, yearling basins, yearling northern. And so uh, if you're looking for an enclosure that fits these boxes, uh, that would be a great place to go. Everything's water as a substrate, keeps a really nice high humidity. These are all on frozen thawed rat pinks right now. I'm feeding them every seven to 10 days. It's really nice, they're burning through food. I've had these guys for almost a month at this point. They are between seven, depending on which one you're looking at. They're either seven or nine months old. So 83 to 84 degrees on the temperatures, very high humidity level. I don't have a humidity gauge, guys, so I just could tell you that's probably minimally 60 to 70%. 70%. They're defecating well, they're eating well, and um, that's pretty much it. So that white that you see on them, that striping, it will come in as they go through the onogenic color change. It will continue to come in. And sometimes I know speaking with a lot of uh, basin breeders, they're really shocked. Sometimes an animal that does not display a hell of a lot of white scales when it was first born, and suddenly as it, as it progresses with the onogenic color change, the white really comes in. So anyway, I started out with four baby basins. As I mentioned, I plan to grow this group in the near future. I still have an adult basin on breeding loan with my friend Marshall Mendez. If you recall, I did breed my basins. I had adult pair uh, last year. I got nine slugs for my female. I wound up losing the male. So that female that I proved out, even though she well proved out, she gave me slugs, I wound up selling her. So theoretically, I have four babies right now, or four well seven to nine months old. I plan to add another four, and I have one adult female out on breeding loan. And that's my basin group, and I'm gonna grow the group and grow these animals, and hopefully you guys are gonna come along on the journey and watch me do it. So I checked a couple hours ago, guys, and I noticed my Diamond Jungle Jaguar female started laying her clutch of eggs. A little concerned about her because she's an amazing animal. I'm going to put a good picture up of her in a little bit so you can see exactly what she looks like. Last year I only got five good eggs from her. Last year she laid on day 29 post ovulation shed and right now I believe we're day 25. But let's take a look here and see. All right, well she's caught on top of her eggs. She appears to be done. So, uh, okay, the two that are exposed look good. So let's check out what's in there. I'm going to pull them out. I'll be right back. All right, guys, so tail of the tape, not really enthused here. It looks like about 15, 16 eggs total, only of which um, I candled them all. Four are definitely good. Five were good last year. 
For a couple that are iffy, I'm going to hope they get stronger vein development over the next couple of days, but it's a real bummer. Her parents were a Gamma Jag and 100% reduced pattern diamond, so she's minimally got 50%, I'd say, you know, pure diamond, plus I don't know how much percentage of diamond was in, in her dam, which was the uh, Gamma Girl. So right now, she was bred to a Stardust Diamond male, and the reason I'm really bummed with this clutch is because I'm going to pull out the babies, and she produces three very different looks of babies, and she actually produced, I, I think, the first ever uh, reduced pattern diamond in jungle jaguar and i'll show you that animal but so it looks like four maybe maybe six good eggs most likely four and let me just show you what she produced last year for me and you'll understand why i'm kind of bummed by what um she gave me this year so i just recandled those eggs and i could tell you guys looks like four of the eggs i could definitely say are good and uh, the other five nine total i put in the incubator the other five they're iffy there's some vein growth we'll see what happens over the next few days but i want to show you guys this is what she produced last year and this is why i'm so bummed because her offspring these are all 75 percent diamonds and they're just pretty amazing this is one look that she produces that animal just looks like a pure diamond python this is a female so i held her back and this next stand you can see they all want to come out neat this is a reduced pattern 75 percent diamond python and you can see this animal is just pretty outrageous and i was hoping to produce a lot more of these this year but that was just not in the cards and finally, this is the reduced pattern diamond jungle jaguar she produced last year. And just an awesome looking animal. There actually might be a picture of this female in uh, Nick Button's new book, The Complete Carpet Python 2. I think she's a I think she's a first. So now you guys can see why I'm bummed. But anyway, I guess as the saying goes, four is better than nothing. Will I try her with a different male next year? I have no idea. I don't know. I love the offspring that she produces with my Stardust male, so I might just try him again. I have no idea. But she has great weight on her. I do the same thing with her as all my other animals. My jungle carpet gave me eggs a couple weeks back. I do the same thing with her. She gave me nine perfect fertile eggs. Anyway, that's it. It doesn't always go our way, but I'm not going to complain. I'm happy with four eggs, and if I get any more... Then the four that actually look really good, I'll be very pleased. All right, I'll keep you guys posted. Okay, so those eggs that you just saw uh, that was previously recorded, those eggs are now 38 days old on the Gamma Jungle Jaguar bred to the Stardust Diamond. So these are the eggs. They're not that pretty looking. They have a lot of dimpling to them, but they're all perfectly veined and they should go. There's a little bit of mold on this one, but my rule of thumb is that if the eggs don't smell, they are absolutely good. And it looks like there's a total of eight good eggs, even this little weird looking boob egg like that has nice vein growth in it so it should hatch so these are diamond jungle jaguar as i mentioned crossed to the stardust diamond and you guys have just saw the babies that i produced last year and they're amazing so i'm really keeping my fingers crossed these all go to distance let's show you guys the jungle carpets now or as i call them 50 percent carpondros are hatching as we these actually started hatching this morning i'm going to put a picture of the parents up on these babies these are honestly some of the nicest jungles personally I've ever seen. They're from the David Hastings line of jungle carpets. I had nine fertile eggs. It looks like nine babies. I plan to hold these back for quite some time. I'll at least hold one pair back for myself and um, I'll make the rest available down the road once established, guys. Uh, if you're interested, you could hit me up down the road. But these are nine baby pure jungle carpets. Once they shed out, I'll get them started. And again, my incubation temperatures are 87.4 degrees. I, I do that the entire distance. These started hatching at 57. I didn't cut any eggs. The only time I ever cut eggs, guys, is with baby chondros. Other than that, I never cut eggs. So uh, really pumped for these. And um, I'm gonna show you guys some Savu Python activity right now. Hey guys, so I just checked, got some Savu Python eggs. This girl actually gave me six eggs last year, all hatched, 100% hatch rate. And last year she had 23 days she laid after her post ovulation shed. This year she was a day early, but uh, let's go take a look at her and let's get her off her eggs and see exactly what we got. This is always a scary part. I'm always excited getting eggs, but I'm so bummed if I get slugs or infertiles, but you're gonna find out with me. So let's go check her out. Okay, so. She appears to be done laying, a nice big egg. That one looks very promising on top. She might or may not be done laying. I may have to leave her alone actually a little bit, but let's take a look here and see what we got. I'm not encouraged. I'm not encouraged at all. So I see two slugs, I see a couple fertiles. Let's get her off her eggs and let me just show you guys exactly what we got and uh, we'll candle what we have also. Okay, so much like last year, she gave me six eggs again, but this time, as you can see, we got three infertiles three slugs and then we have these three that look perfect but upon candling them it looks like only the one 
egg. The top one does not look good. I don't see any vein growth whatsoever. Of course, I'm going to incubate them. That one there does not look good to me. That one there looks like it's possibly the only good egg, and this one looks like it's not good either. So it looks like out of six eggs, looks like only one is going to be good. We're going to get rid of those. We're going to incubate these three still and see if we can get any vein development over the next few days. But I am not happy, as you can imagine. I'm a little bit bummed by that, but here's the good news. The female, all the eggs are out of her. She's not egg-bound. She looks great. Not sure what went wrong. I think, I t honestly, I know the difference last year between this season. I just didn't get her down as cold as I typically do, and I will take the blame on that. I was actually, for two months or during uh, December and January, I was pretty sick when I do my incubation with COVID, and then I got shingles, as you guys, I mentioned to you guys in previous videos. I just couldn't put as much attention into the animals, but hopefully... I have two more Gravit Savus, and let's see what they bring me. But any case, so it looks like one out of six good eggs here, and that really stinks. So my Savu season is starting off like a thundering herd of turtles, guys. Last year I produced 22 babies. I had an amazing year from four different clutches. This year's not going so well. Uh, those eggs that I just showed you in the video, that's these three right here. They're now 18 days old. Only one of those eggs appears to be good. I'm continuing to incubate them even though I'm 99% sure that only one of those eggs is going to hatch. This is the second clutch of Savu Python eggs. Again, a total of three eggs. It looks like only two of those are good. Those eggs are actually for my silver female Savu, which is not looking very silver at the moment. She has to go through her shed. They're not even a week old at this point. So it looks like I'm gonna have a total of three Savu clutches this year. From my first two clutches, I have a grand total of three fertile Savu Python eggs. Fingers crossed I have one more silver Savu clutch that's due in the next couple weeks. They're actually due June 24th, and last year she gave me five good eggs. I'm hoping for five good eggs, but the bottom line is sometimes it goes your way and sometimes it doesn't, but uh, I will keep you guys posted on Savu Python Babies. Hey, since my friend Summer, uh, who's editing my video, works for Justin over at Canova, I wanted to make her feel at home, and I thought I'd bring out some uh, recent acquisitions to my collection. Uh, I love lightning pies, guys. I don't know if you know what they are, but it's basically, it's an MJ, Marcus Jane Exantic, um, and they make them, they come in the pie combination, right? So they call them lightning pies. It's basically a black and white snake. So this is a Pinto Visual Exanthic Pinto Pied, right? And this is a het. This is a pied het for MJ Exanthic. I have another female as well, so the plan is over the next in the next couple of years, I will be producing MJ Exanthic Pies, and I just love those. They call them lightning pies. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Summer, again, thank you so much for helping with this video. Caroline, congratulations on your beautiful new daughter. Let us never forget, US Arc, they do so much for us and ask so little from us, especially for the folks in Florida. They can use our support with US Arc Florida now more than ever. And before it happens in your state, guys, and trust me, it will, let's make sure we are always donating and thinking of US Arc. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. I really appreciate it. And I will see everybody in a couple weeks. Who has the best YouTube channel? Me?